Hi, I'm Elaine Briggs and I'm Head of Education and Innovation here at Future Fit Training. Has the Raising the Bar report over the last three years had a noticeable impact on the standards of training? I would like to think that the Raising the Bar report has had a noticeable impact over the last three, actually nearly four years now. Um, the reason that the Raising the Bar report came about was because we, along with UK Active and, and feedback from operators in the sector, identified that people entering the sector, even though trained and qualified, weren't providing the service and the skills required by not just operators but clients and, and people, members using the, using the, the gyms. Um, and we decided to dig a little deeper and find out what that was about. So in its inception, Raising the Bar was all about fitness professionals and questions around their skill sets and any uh, gaps in skill sets. The next year we asked more questions, the next year we asked more questions and we asked more operators as well. Um, and we widened the scope, so we also asked about whether people were qualified to be able to teach children in gyms, whether people uh, were qualified to be able to give nutrition advice, for example. Um, and running alongside that all the time, as well as being sponsored uh, partnership with UK Active and, and support from Simspa, running parallel to that was Simspa's work on professional development standards. So over the last two or three years, Simspa have invested a huge amount of resource in really bringing the sector together, um, getting everybody involved, putting together professional development groups to start and look at various different job roles, whether it's personal training, leisure duty manager, lifeguard, swimming instructor, and the idea is to get these stakeholders involved to say, okay, so as a minimum standard, what do we need to have within these qualifications? We're now at the point, three years on, where from raising the bar and from these professional development groups, uh, we've identified those minimum standards. Since we have put the, uh, the standards together, they've been taken up by awarding bodies. And what we really hope to see now is these new qualifications with these new skills being delivered. And the end result will be, hopefully over the next 18 months to two years, is that operators will find that the people that are coming to them new to the industry with the new qualification will actually be much more qualified, much more employable, um, and will have much more longevity within the sector. Can you give us a brief overview of why you wrote the blog? Yes, I can. Um, I was trying to make a distinction in the blog um, between the importance of both education and training, um, and the importance of online learning as well as practical learning. Um, and this has come from recently, there's been quite a few conversations within the industry regarding fully online courses. Um, now, nothing wrong with online courses at all, nothing wrong with e-learning. In fact, the technology for e-learning now is, is unbelievable. In some industries, um, there's use of virtual reality headsets. In the motor industry, people can more or less fix a car without even touching the car because of the virtual reality. We're not quite there yet in the fitness industry. Um, and we also have a lot of vocational qualifications, a lot of qualifications where people require to be working with people. So it makes sense to me that certainly certain parts of that qualification are delivered practically and that the assessment is also delivered practically. In my blog, I mentioned, uh, I think it was an example of a hairdresser. So somebody who, again, might learn lots and lots of theory during on, online training, during their, their training, they may look at various different parts of, uh, of hairdressing and how hair grows and how to colour hair and all sorts of things on e-learning, but you wouldn't really want to go to a hairdresser who had absolutely no experience of cutting hair. Um, and the other analogy I made was one that actually um, I've, heard, I've heard banded around a few times now, and that's the example of if your daughter comes home from college and tells you that she's doing sex education at school, you're probably going to be all right with that. If she comes home and tells you that she's going to be embark on sex training at school, you can see that there's a difference and you probably wouldn't be as happy about that. And that's just the difference that I'm, the, the difference that I'm trying to highlight. There is absolutely a place for online learning and e-learning and all the technology that goes with it. But in our industry, where it's a people industry and Raising the Bar itself has highlighted that there are gaps in communication skills and social skills, then there's also absolutely a place for practical training and practical assessment.
So what's next for training in the fitness industry? Uh, that's quite a big question. Um, I think, as I've already alluded to, with the professional development standards, we've got lots of new qualifications out there. I'm interested to see how they're delivered and the impact of those on the industry. I think through raising the bar and other communications that we have with operators and individual personal trainers and people working in the industry, we'll start to see more trends and more areas that we've not thought about before that people need to get trained in. Um, I know that nutrition is very much coming to the fore. Um, people are wanting to know much more information than they have previously and then looking to fitness professionals to provide that information. In addition to that, they're also looking to fitness professionals as is government to provide information on how to cope with stress, how to stop smoking, um, how to sleep better. So much more of a holistic approach, I think, uh, for a fitness professional. The exercise part of it is actually becoming a smaller part of being a personal trainer. And in terms of technology, I think there will still be lots of space for online learning. I would like to think that we could embrace more technology in our sector as time goes on. Things like keyboard recognition, virtual reality, people listening to courses as opposed to watching them or, or being there. Um, and even as a personal trainer, I think that there's a lot of room at the moment for people to do online personal training. So to complement your client coming into the gym, you may see them once or twice a month even, and the rest of the time you may be communicating over social media, reminding them to go to the gym, sending them nutritional plans, uh, motivating them in general. So I think there's, there's a, a huge shift and huge change, um, and I think that will be influenced by government strategy, by interrupters and, and thought leaders coming into the industry, and by clients and what they want themselves, and customers of gyms being, being more and more demanding. But I'm also interested to know what you hear um, and what you think about this. So if you want to get in touch, write any comments. Um, the address is at the bottom of the screen and please do tell us your thoughts.